self-care is different for everybody mm-hmm. it's about what you need to do for yourself to keep your mood at the right level for you and that can be different so how mm-hmm. how important is it that people who are struggling reach out it's really important it, it's when you think about those three pillars of happiness that we always work with it's really important And I know that some people are more isolated than others, um, but there are lots of different ways to do that. There's lots of support groups, there's lots of chat groups, you know, that you can do virtually, even people that are isolating themselves, maybe the the health is a little bit more precarious. There are lots of ways to access that, even if you haven't got friends and family around you. And it's, it's one of the most important things you can do. So how do you personally now manage your stress and anxiety? Um, I'm, it's a bit of a debatable topic, but I'm of the opinion that anxiety and stress don't, shouldn't be a feature of your day to day life. Um, there's a lot of talk about and debate about whether somebody that suffers with anxiety should always suffer with anxiety. And I can definitely tell you that that's not the case. Um, if I, I tell clients that if I do a good enough job, anxiety isn't going to be part of your day-to-day life. That's not to say that when life sends you a bit of a curveball, you won't have an anxious reaction to it. That's your safety mechanism. That's how you'll react. But anxiety should not be a part of your day-to-day world. It shouldn't be something you almost give a second thought to. Um, And once you realize how anxiety fits together, you know the things to do that you adapt as part of your life. Um, And there's lots of things that I do. I'm a huge outdoorsy person. I love nature. I've got horses, I've got a farm and that stuff, even though it's really hard work, particularly in winter, that's all the stuff that keeps me on the straight and narrow. So no matter how difficult a day I've had at work with some really traumatic clients and and listening to that sort of trauma on a daily basis you know going home even in the wind and the rain and the mud keeps me on the straight and narrow so I know the things to do that keep me in in my optimal place and obviously when I'm working with clients that's exactly what I do I help them to find that space obviously tackle the anxiety and give them that toolkit to make sure that that's where they stay but also how they maintain it in the future. What is self-care and why is it important? Self-care is different for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's about what you need to do for yourself to keep your mood at the right level for you. And that can be different, but it's about what you need to do in your world. First of all, it's probably adjusting a, a gap. So for often for people when they start off, there's a gap between where they'd like to be and where they are currently. So it's looking at different levels of self-care. Um, so it's relaxation, it's nutrition, um, it, it's engagement with other people. It's, it's things that you can do to get yourself to a better place. And then it's all about maintaining how you do that. And a big thing with starting the self-care is learning to prioritize yourself. It's that old adage of fitting your own oxygen mask first. Um, We're often about compromising our own well-being for everybody else around you, particularly if you support families and other people. It's very much about deciding that you're going to prioritize your own self and then finding ways to do that that work for you. So what makes you and your approach different? Um, I think my approach is different because I'm very cognitive, very practical. Um, I don't use sort of psycho babble. Um, you know, I think I'm very accessible. Clearly the science background is all there. Um, you know, the degrees and all the training and, and years of, of constant training actually for, for registration. Um, but I think, my experience and the person I am as an individual mean that working with me is quite different to most. A lot of people that I work with appreciate that I'm very straightforward. 
um, you know, I'm very honest with people. I can quickly get into people's problems and where the problem exists. Um, I predominantly use cognitive behavioral therapy um, because it's so practical and look at what people are doing in terms of the behavior and what people are thinking and look at core belief things. I'm, I'm also quite keen, keen on something called schema therapy, which is about the rules that people develop for living, which can cause the, the problems for them. So looking at all those things, we mind map um, where the problem exists and how to do it differently. So it's very solution based. It's very scientifically evidence based and we have a direction of travel. Obviously the goal is whatever the problem is that's driven them through the door, but we sit down, we, we look at what the problem is and look at how we're going to solve it. So it's the pieces of a puzzle um, and we look at pulling the pieces apart and putting them back together in a different way. And so my model of working with people is very different to somebody like a counselling model. It, it couldn't be more different than that. And my, my soapbox topic is the fact that the whole industry is unregulated and that you can set up in the morning and call yourself a counsellor. And the problem with that is clearly that people are unqualified. But the bigger problem for me is that... Um, they can do that very cheaply because they haven't the overheads of years and years of training and continuous training um, and professional accountability, but also people go and see them very cheaply and then they come away thinking that they can't be helped. And that for me is the big problem. Um, so what I do and what I offer people are solutions and that's very, very different to something like a, a counselling model or you know, the, the person that is in coaching and then starts to get involved in mental health. Um, that's all very problematic for everybody in the mental health field and for the public wanting help.